Today's port trigger tutorial is entitled Exploiting Server-Side Parameter Pollution in a Query String. To solve the lab, we must log in as the administrator and delete Carlos. Access the lab and go to my account. We have no credentials to sign up with, but there is a forgot password link. Click it and request a password reset for the administrator user. A password reset email has been sent to the administrator's email address. This does not help us. Go to Burp Proxy HTTP History and let's see what requests are sent when we request a password reset. We can see a post forgot password that has some user controlled input. Send this to repeater by clicking Ctrl R. We also see a JavaScript file. We will need to look through this code for clues later on, so send it to repeater as well. In repeater, send the requests just to make sure they work as intended. The post forgot password request returns a JSON object containing part of a user's email based on that user's username. If we try another user we are sure exists, Carlos, we can see his email is something at carlosmontoya.net. Finally, sending a username that does not exist, let's say Joe, results in an invalid username error. Change the username back to administrator. What we want to do now is test for parameter pollution. Although we don't have access to any API endpoint, there might be an internal API present. If the website embeds user input, in our case the username parameter, in a request to an internal API without adequate encoding, we might be able to find some useful information about the administrator user. To test for parameter pollution, let's first attempt to add a second invalid parameter to the username value. To do this, we have to add the ampersand character. We say ampersand foo equals bar. In order for this new parameter to be treated as part of the username value and not as a new parameter altogether, we have to URL encode the ampersand character. To do this, select it, right click, select convert selection, URL, URL encode all characters. We get an error, parameter is not supported, even though we expected the invalid username error. This suggests that the internal API interpreted the foo equals bar as a new parameter. Another thing we can try is to truncate the server-side request. For this, we need to use an encoded hashtag character. So again, add the hashtag, select it, right-click, convert selection, URL, URL encode all characters. This time, we get a different error. Field not specified. This suggests there is a parameter named field, which we've just removed with the hashtag character. Let's add the parameter to the username value using the encoded ampersand character, so percent %26, field equals x. This gets us another error, invalid field, which means that we've correctly identified the parameter. We just have to find out what values we can give it. For this, we are going to use intruder to brute force different values. Send this request to intruder by clicking Ctrl I. In intruder, select the value of the field, in this case x, and click the add button on the right side of the screen. This inserts a pair of markers on either side of the selected text, creating a payload position. During the attack, this is where intruder will add different values from a list we provide. Make sure the attack type is set to sniper, then go to the payloads tab. For the payload settings, I will select add from list, server-side variable names. As far as I know, these lists are only available in the professional version, so if you are using the community edition, you will have to add different variable names by hand or by loading a local file. I will leave a link to a comprehensive list of server-side variable names in the description below. Click Start Attack. After the attack is over, click the Status Code tab to arrange the requests by the received response. As you can see, we get two 200 codes for the email and username payloads. Go back to repeater and try the discovered values. The username one returns the user's username and the email returns the email. This is not very helpful. We still need to find a way to reset the administrator's password. Time for some recon. Go to the forgot password JavaScript file. The code here is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but we can see an URL encode form data function, which takes a form data object, iterates through its entries, and builds an URL encoded string. Next, the validate input and create message validates the form inputs and makes a post request to the server using the fetch API. Then it handles the response accordingly. What we are interested in is the forgot PWD ready callback. The function checks if there is a reset token in the URL parameters. 
If there is, the page is redirected to an URL with the reset token. Let's try to access this URL with an invalid token and see what happens. Copy the path, go to the browser and paste it in the URL. Let's give the reset token a value of ABC. We get an invalid token response, as expected. Go back to burp. The question is, is this reset underscore token a valid field parameter that we can send to our server-side API? Let's try to do this. Go back to the post forgot password request and change the field's name to reset underscore token. Send the request. We get a 200 OK response containing a reset token value. Copy the token, go to the browser and paste it in the URL. Click enter. We can see a reset password page. Let's set a new password. I'll just say admin admin and submit. Finally, try logging in as the administrator using the newly created password, in my case, admin. We are in. Go to the admin panel page and delete Carlos to solve the lab. This is it for today. See you in the next one.